say depression, anxiety, keep it to those symbols. Like we can always work into addictions if you want later on. But for right now is that, so anybody who's been through emotional trauma, abuse, physical, sexual, you name it, like one event or reoccurring events can create multiple emotion. Like say when my father suddenly died, you know, people are like, you must be sad. I'm like, wow, I wish I was just sad. It's like, I'm sad that he's gone. I'm angry that he's gone. I'm regretful that he's gone. You may fearful that he's gone. Like, what am I going to do now? Everything else, all those emotions and intense ones just made pretty much my mind detach because I didn't know how to process it. We never got taught in school. What do you do with your feelings? What do you do when you're angry? What do you do when you're fearful? What do you do when you're sad? No one taught us. And especially for men, the stigma, you know, rub some fucking dirt in it. You don't talk about it. Just move along. You know, and if, if it's life's that rough, then have a drink, have something to smoke, and, and you can see the cycle that continues. And the biggest problem is men and women and children, mostly everybody, wait for something external to happen to feel better. They wait like, oh, when I get a new job, I'll be happy. When I get okay. a new partner, I'll be happy. When I get money, I'll be happy. And if we're just making deals with ourselves. A, we're putting on externally. So that's like, you might as well just go to the casino and just start gambling, <laughs> like straight up, you know, because it is, it is a crapshoot. You are waiting. And if you believe in the law of attraction or the law of vibration, that pain, that worry, that fear, all those negative emotions are actually keeping you further from what you want. I had to, after reading so many books and listen, I never went to therapy because my story was so unique. Nobody, nobody's been through what I've been through. Now, it's not the most horrible thing. Like my, my village wasn't raided by a war general. I didn't see my family killed in front of me. Like there are right. people who've gone through that. I don't even, I couldn't even, like, I don't even have the empathy to process that because what would that be? It's unique. And I can't share it. It's not for public comp, uh, consumption. consumption. And the only reason is, the only reason for that one is, is just because other people are involved. And it'll affect their healing because especially when you talk about emotions, people are like, what have you been through? I want to know what you've been through <laughs> and they won't listen to you until you actually do it. So they, they want to validate your story before they'll listen even further now. And fair enough, I'm going to throw you another roadblock. I can't share my story and I don't want to share my story, but I'll tell you this. It is just a story. And this story's, created emotions, created emotions like anger, sadness, regret, shame, guilt, you name it, and intensified. And like the old adage, I waited for time to heal it. And all that did was take all my problems from the conscious mind and put it into my subconscious. So all of our memories, good or bad, is stored in here. Now in the subconscious, 95% of our day is subconscious. Like you ever drive home and you get in the driveway and you're like, shit, how did I get here? Your subconscious got you there while your conscious mind was playing around problems, whatever, this and that, not being happier in the present moment. It is what it is. I'm not here to judge and go through the same things. What I did learn was that like, say depression or what you've been through in life, any type of trauma, the one thing you haven't done is you haven't accepted it. You have never told yourself it's okay. I'm okay. It's going to be okay. Nor have you surrendered to the feelings. Yes, this does mean crying. But look at it this way. Babies cry, adults surrender. The mind has created so many powerful thoughts, feelings, chemicals in the body that it needs a powerful release. And it doesn't get more powerful than the tears. The other thing we haven't done with our past, we haven't forgiven it. We haven't forgiven the people who harmed us. Maybe, maybe it's a person. Maybe it's God. Maybe it's whoever. Or... We haven't forgiven ourselves, which we care. If we don't forgive ourselves, there's guaranteed we're carrying around subconscious guilt and shame. Now, if you talk to anybody who's gone through rehab, the one, the two major toxic emotions that a human can carry is guilt and shame. And everybody in recovery has been carrying so much of it that they needed to medicate to get away from it. Now, if you're carrying around too much subconscious guilt and shame, you'll have thoughts. It'll produce thoughts like, I'm not worthy. It's not worth it. I'll never find love. I'm not good enough. That's in the subconscious. It's programmed there because of the shame, the beliefs that we have and the feelings attached to those thoughts that we have about ourselves. But when you surrender out of it, you just surrender to the feeling. Like most people, when I talk about it, they get real uncomfortable because it's about crying. And they're like, Jeff, they're like, honestly, 
if I started crying, I wouldn't stop. And I'm like, fair enough, because again, that's the belief. But the good news is, is we're not a bottomless pit of emotions. We, we, we like, there's only so much. We can't go over to our neighbors and borrow a cup of sadness or anger, you know? <laughs> You, you can, can only there, you can only go over there and they can deal you some that <laughs> exactly like, exactly they can be like you're That's... low on sadness here's a cup of fucking more shit just drink this mm -hmm. and you're like oh, oh. my god <laughs> oh if i'm ever feeling too good i'll just message my exes and wait for them to ghost me they just to put it into perspective who i am they have an endless supply of emotions for you, you exactly but you can empty the tank it's like like i'm a canadian so i use the analogy of a hockey fight like you'll see ho uh, hockey players who fight each other almost every time friends off the ice because in that moment, they let it all out, all the anger, everything. And it's just there. So once anybody who's ever been in a fight before win or lose, once you get past the ego, when you lose, win or lose, you feel good. You feel like, because you just did something fucking primal that just got all the emotions out. Now, in today's society, we really can't do physical harm to people. It's kind of frowned upon. Them. But again, you see the next generation, they start cutting themselves. Right. Because they still have the anger. They still have, you know, grown up in shit homes, this and that, got the problems. But it's so frowned upon to even any type of aggression that they cut themselves. Right. It's it's the most horrifying fucking thing I've ever seen. And yeah, my 14, yeah. my my son, he's not 14 anymore. He's 24, but when he was 14, he one time re he opened the door and he leaned into the fridge and I just saw his arm shredded. Yeah. Now I, me I and my brother like that too. I as a parent, you just you don't know like I felt about this big and all I kept thinking was my baby. My baby's harming himself. And me and my brother like me and my brother grew up as tough guys, if you will, bullies for better case of a word. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so I taught my, I was like, I'm never going to teach my son how to fight. I'm going to teach him how to use his words and everything else. But I never taught him how to deal with, say, if he went through trauma. And that poor kid has gone through fucking trauma. Like, he's good now the last few years. But he watched his house burn down. And there's other stories I can't tell because it'll just incriminate other people. And I don't need that drama. Right. So, but again, back to the surrender part, when we surrender to our past, we surrender to the anger, the shame, the guilt, we literally get it out of the body. Now, most of the times when people cry, a couple of minutes after, they'll kind of giggle, like they'll, they'll have laughing. They're like, oh, oh, like, you know, like, he, because what happened was you got so much negative energy out and the body wants to go back to its homeostasis. That in that moment, you feel at peace. That is the power of surrender. It transcends your emotions. It transcends sadness, guilt, shame, anger, whatever have you, into peace, love, and joy. Not all the time. We don't live in that kind of a world right now. We are more divided, more segregated than I've ever seen on 46 years on this planet. 